This is a quick video, almost more like a mini webinar on putting together a door-to-door -to -door sales route targeting restaurants. Today we are going to target restaurants. That's not to say you should or you shouldn't. Uh, this is just the target that we decided on today. And where we will start is by creating a checklist of everything that we want to get done before we actually start the campaign. So the first step is to create a campaign, to physically map out a plan, of what our goals are, how many people we are going to contact, what we're going to hand them, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, from there we go to the printed materials. We want to get all of our brochures, postcards, all printed up, designed, and ready to go. Uh, then our script. Now our cold calling script doesn't mean you're going to read off an actual script. It just means an outline of what are the, the hot buttons you want to focus on, uh, what kind of information do you want to collect, your leads list, which is the target of restaurants that you want to go after. Then take those leads, load them on a map, and create follow-up routines. So we're going to start with the actual writing a campaign. And the easiest way is just to create a, a couple of quick goals that you want to accomplish. Obviously you want to get an estimate. That's the first one. Now what if you were unable to get an estimate right there and then? Well at least collect information and try to qualify the interest level. From there you can put them in a category then and create a follow-up campaign. Or if they're unqualified then on the next rotation you won't waste your time talking to them. That's why when you actually talk to somebody you want to put them in a category of qualified or unqualified and then put them in a category. Right. What your budget is, uh, I would try to budget it for a whole year. You really want to run a campaign for 8 months to 12 months till you decide. Now along the way obviously you have to think on your feet and make decisions but and sometimes change things up. So a yearly budget I think is best but you can also do a monthly budget of whatever you are comfortable with. If you're comfortable with spending uh, 500 a month, 1000 a month, 2000 you know, that's that's up to you, but at least the general outline of something that you are comfortable with long term. Uh, map out the geography. Do you want to go by a whole zip code, a city? Uh, you can put a pin on a map and do a, a radius of a mile or two miles. Uh, if size of the restaurant matters to you or not. Uh, industry is, well, we're targeting restaurants, but you, you might want to decide franchise or non-franchise. That uh, Some contractors don't really like going after the franchises or chains, and they just want to focus on uh, like a family-owned business. You know, that's up to you or well, independence. Who are you going to contact? Uh, generally in restaurants, it's general manager, assistant manager, maybe a regional manager for um, for the for the chains and franchises. Uh, think about what kind of services you want to provide. Uh, some might be tile and grout restrooms, detailing, uh, carpet of course, upholstery, maybe pressure washing and windows if you get into that. I'd keep it to around three, two or three and rotate them. So if you decide to visit three times a year to the same locations, that way you can just keep rotating the services. So one time you'll go tile, next time carpet, next time windows. That way you can see if you can find a hot button. They might like their current vendor for the other two, but then they need a, a window vendor for some reason. 
uh, packages. Some of this is going to go by actually having a conversation with somebody. They will usually give you a general idea of what they're currently doing. Restaurants can go as often as every three weeks. Uh, you know, it depends on the size and traffic and uh, the type of food that they're making, you know, how much grease. But you never really want to give somebody a one-time bid. The point is you want to give people at least two times a year, four times a year at minimum. Uh, then you can, when you set your budget, you can start to think about, well, how many... How much? How many hours am I willing to dedicate to this? How much money am I willing to put into this? Because the goal of all this is to try to figure out how many people you're going to visit and stick to it. But you want to create a rotation of three to four times a year you're visiting the same people. Contractors can come and go and businesses know this. So if they see you coming by several times a year, one of those times they might need somebody and they're going to grab you because you seem legit. They, they've seen you two other times. They've seen you last year. Uh, you left them uh, your card with, say, a uh, flyer last time. So then that, that's why it's very important in our, in our industry because people can be very skeptical of contractors to begin with. So when they see you around month after month, year after year, uh, that builds a lot of confidence that you are legit and reliable. So if you decided that um, you're going to do 20 a week, well, that's fine. 20 a week times 13 weeks then. And then when you get to at the end of the 13 weeks, you're just going to start right back at that first one all over again. So that way you're repeating every um, uh, every three to four months. And of course, uh, think of your costs. And when you think of your costs, if you're doing it yourself, try to think of how much this is going to cost if I hired somebody. Uh, when you do it yourself, uh, sometimes you don't take the, the cost into account. And then later on down the road, you try to hire somebody and all of a sudden the campaign's not profitable anymore because you never counted for all of your labor. So I think it's a, a good idea to figure out your costs based on what it would cost you to hire somebody, at least for the marketing part. Uh, the next part is going to be creating a flyer. I think for something, especially restaurants, there's a lot of restaurants, but in general, and once you get to two, three hundred leads, I think it's a good idea to create a specific marketing material for them. So you can then say you are exclusive, you are specific, you focus on their industry, you start to know the lingo of the industry, and you kind of blend in with them. Uh, some of the things that you can put in a sales flyer is your services over here on the left you create some kind of a headline here uh, plant the seed about creating a program that's a big part of commercial work is getting that program getting somebody to set up a every six months every four months a restaurant even monthly and even more but that, that's, that's the point of creating it. a specific flyer is to plant that seed that, that you specialize, you know their industry. From here, we are going to go to a cold calling script. Now, I know when you say the word script, people think you're going to actually sit there and read off the script. That's not what it means. What it means is you are going to come up with, uh, uh, you're going to walk in knowing exactly what you are going to say and then uh, who you're going to ask for and what your objectives are. Or, you Because know, you're going to run into the same type of questions over and over and over again and you want ready answers because it, it makes you seem like a pro that 
you know, you've done this before for years, even if you've only done it, you're just starting out. If you come across like you know all the answers, then people think that you are legit, which again is a, a big, a big deal with contractors. So a, a simple thing uh, in a restaurant situation, you're probably going to meet a greeter or a waitress. So it's really not that difficult. Explain who you are. Just identify who you are, what service you provide, and then ask who is the person that handles that. And they will be more than happy to show you to the right person. And if they're not in right now, or they won't see you because they're busy, uh, at least get their name then. So the next time you come, you can ask for Bob, or you can ask for Steve Smith. People, when you ask for somebody's specific name, the chances of them putting you through to that person is going to go up times 10. And then when you meet that person, again, introduce yourself, ask them if they have a minute, explain the services that you provide and what the benefits are, and start to ask questions. Uh, these are some technical questions. You can come up with your own, but these are just some uh, general uh, te technical questions. If they're not ready for an estimate, see if you can um, pin them down on a, a follow-up time. Well, if you're not ready right now, can I call you back in a month? Can I call you back in a couple months? They will, uh, in general, give you some type of idea. Uh, some points that can be added, uh, or even questions they might ask, is how are you different than... 8 million other contractors and if you can come up with some uh, some reason why you are different uh, you can drop some company facts especially if you've been in business a long time or if say you already are servicing 20 restaurants this would be a good time for you to drop that and actually this is the part where you would want to do that this is another part References, especially references in a specific industry. If you already clean 10 restaurants, you might want to name some of them. But if you don't, then even if you can name um, any local businesses that, that can help or well known businesses, anything to create some credibility. Next, we're going to go to our lead list and there's plenty of services out there uh, sales genie go leads if you go to google and google it uh, there's tons of companies out there that can build lists for you uh, we can do that for you too and actually we include it for a thousand of them for free to get you started uh, if you join our program and some of the information that you might want is name first name you don't want email you want to get the email directly from somebody don't I don't recommend buying emails um, when you start talking to people maybe you can find out their birthday obviously company address mailing all the mailing information phone number uh, qualified and unqualified and we're gonna go over this again in the next section a uh, square foot of the building you might want to know how many employees they have uh, sales volume these are more uh, detailed factors but right here this this is the main stuff you definitely want to know or if you don't know when you first go in then you want to collect this information as you speak with people so then after you have your list of businesses and if you're only going to do 50 or 100 you could probably just google this uh, you can just go look up restaurants and uh, go to yellowpages.com or google and I'm sure you can find 50 of them maybe even hundreds of them I, don't, I never looked that deep into it so you don't necessarily have to pay for it if you have the time to go through this so from here we're, we are then going to take those leads 
and we want to put them on a map. You can go uh, there. You can use uh, Google Maps. You can use MapQuest. There's tons of uh, mapping services out there you can use. And what you want to do then is you're going to take that list of leads and you're going to load it onto a map. So then when you're out in the field, you can just use your smartphone and just go location to location. And as you speak with people afterwards, you can go ahead and punch that information in right from your phone. Uh, you know, create a reminder, you know, I'm going to call them back in a week or a month. Remember to send this person information if there was something that you didn't have handy with you. But nowadays, uh, that's why to go back here, this is uh, one thing I forgot to point out is this is why we put them on an Excel sheet like this is that it's Excel is in a uh, universal language that you can then take that information and you can upload it into a CRM. You can put it in a sales and marketing software. You can load it onto a map. So that's why uh, back here in the leads list, this is why we, we put them like this. This is why we put them in this format because it's easy to upload them into other programs you might want. And, you know, you want to think about this long term. It's not just um, programs you're using today right now, but also programs you might want to use uh, three months from now, three years from now. So you would want to put everything on a map and when you're out in the field, you can punch that information right in for that account. Now the next section is we're going to go over qualified and unqualified. Uh, qualified means you you spoke with somebody and they have given you some their information. Uh, you find out what their name is, title, uh, get their email, a birthday. That that's kind of niche, but you know some people like that. Obviously, phone number or any extensions or direct lines. That would be qualified then. And the reason is that. Now you want to keep up on this person. You have their name, you have some general information and what they're looking for, uh, any time frames they're looking for. Them. So now you can create uh, follow-up routines. And in three months, when you go back and visit the same list of people again, we're going to skip over this one because you are already doing another campaign. You're already following a different routine for them. Now, on the other hand, what if they're unqualified? What if you don't want to do business with them? Or the brother-in-law has been doing it for the last 20 years. Well, you wouldn't want to keep visiting them every three months because they're not going to change their mind in that time frame. Now, when somebody's unqualified, that doesn't mean you never call them ever again. You just don't keep them on a regular rotation of three to four times a year. I would make it like every two years, every year maybe. I, th I think every year is fair to just kind of check in and see if management change, ownership changed, I don't know. Uh, vendors go out of business. So unqualified. Um, again, when you go through this list again in three to four months, now you're not visiting this person again. You're, you took them off the list and a good idea would put two fresh ones in then. Next is your follow-up routines. Uh, now on the internet and email world, nowadays they call them if-then routines. If this happens, then my actions are going to be that. So for instance, if somebody's qualified, you want to think about, then what am I going to do? Well, then I'm going to email them quarterly. Or I'm going to mail them a postcard two times a year. I'm going to call them back every six months. That And this is all up to you on how aggressive you want to be. But if this is something you want to pre-think about is, well, if somebody does have interest, then I'm going to follow what routine, what follow-up routine. If you submit somebody an estimate, then what am I going to do? I'm going to call back in a week, two weeks, and then a month. Or, you know, that's, again, that's everybody's different on how aggressive they want to be. 
I would definitely call follow up at least three times. And then after three times, if you didn't close them, chances are you're not going to in a short period of time. So I would then send them back over into this pile that that you're still going to stay in contact with them, let them know you're alive, but uh, you're not going to keep you're, you're not going to keep calling them every two weeks. That would be excessive, in, in my opinion, anyways. Then, if you win an estimate, then what do you want to do? You want to send them uh, to cross sell different services a couple times a year. Uh, you might want to send a customer survey, uh, an email newsletter every quarter. Now, what if you lose an estimate? Uh, then what do you want to do? That's another question to ask. Just because you lose an estimate this time, that doesn't mean forever and ever. Uh, all the time I give estimates, I don't win them, and six months later people come back. Or next year I do win it. There's all kinds of reasons why. Uh, people go out of, uh, contractors go out of business, they fall apart, they don't do a good job. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons why. But I would want to create some kind of a follow-up routine that if I lose an estimate, I'm going to do what? So in this case, I'm still going to send them the quarterly newsletter and call them once a year. Now that's completely up to you, but um, I, I would do something. I, I would do some kind of follow-up. So this is everything that we covered. Uh, first, fill out your campaign, get all your printed materials created, create some kind of an outline or script of, of what you want to say, what questions you want to ask, what information you want to know about. Put together your list of people that you want to target whether it's 200, 500, 1,000, it doesn't matter. Put a list together and load them on a map and create actual routes uh, with a routine of around every 13 weeks. And then, of course, create your follow-up campaigns.